Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. AMD have officially disclosed key details for Zen 6, and these next generation of server processors are extremely impressive. We are looking at a 70% improvement in performance from one generation to another, but I want to ask you guys, how much of this can we extrapolate for the desktop? Well, that's what we're going to be aiming to do in this very video, plus also talk about some other bits and pieces. Now, just to be clear, that 70% number is not just IPC and clock frequency. Much of it is also the increase in core count amd will be ramping the core configuration from 192 cores from its flagship up to 256 for zen 6 but even so there's still a decent chunk here that is simply unaccounted for by looking at the cores alone so let's first of all look at some of the official disclosures maybe some unofficial ones and then we'll kind of go from there now i'm going to put my glasses on because my eyesight sucks ass and yes i'm looking a little red for this video i apologize it is like a billion degrees here here in the UK. I don't have air conditioning on at the moment and uh, the window has to be closed in my office because uh, otherwise you guys are just going to hear a bunch of noise. So yeah, I'm probably going to be half dead by the end of this video. So, you know, just take that into consideration. I apologize. Anyway, um, so we'll briefly just look at this image, which is an official image from AMD's uh, Advanced AI event. You will see that, of course, we are looking at uh, the next generation of products, Turin, MI350, and Polara, of course, the 2025. No real interest there. It's this generation. Who gives a crap? That's old. Venice, MI400, and Volcano are 2026, and 2027 is Varano. MI500 and Volcano. Now, what I want to say, first of all, is AMD are just relentless with its execution at the moment, whether it's CPUs and also the MI series of uh, data center pro uh, graphics cards. They are just being absolutely relentless. And of course, that's what has to happen because NVIDIA and their competition, Intel, are not just resting on the laurels either. Now, just a brief overview. This is kind of a highlight image, and I'll give uh, credit here to WCCF Tech where I nabbed this. Um, 256 cores on 2NM, Zen 6, 2X CPU to GPU bandwidth, 1.7X Gen on Gen performance, and 1.6 terabytes per second of bandwidth. Of course, that would be, you know, main system memory. I have to say, every time I see 256 cores now, it just it just boggles the mind. That's 512 threads. Like, dude, 256 threads across multiple servers would have been impressive several years ago. And now we're looking at, like, 256 cores for a single processor. For something that's just like that, okay, maybe... I'm exaggerating, but you get the idea. It just goes plonk onto your socket. Is I, 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 I mean, yeah, that's how tech works, shocking and all, but I just think it's so damn cool. Like, it's just ridiculous what you can do nowadays. Anyway, um, 2X, that's, of course, explainable by the fact that moving from one generation of PCIe, PCIe 5 to PCIe 6, nothing too interesting there. But gen on gen performance. Now, this is the number that I think a lot of folks have been very, uh, very much interested in. So now, again, 192 cores up to 256. What we know officially slash unofficially, depending on your, you know, <laughs> basically the information seems to be that AMD will be changing the CCD layout. So in terms of the CPU cores, of course, AMD are going to be increasing the number of cores in each of the CCDs, and this is going to be a key component for the next generation. So again, 192 cores with Zen 5 goes up to 256 cores for Zen 6. And um, even so, we are still left with just over 20% of the performance that is not it's just not accounted for. So what's going on? Well, I'm sure many of you are already screaming, well, dude, some of that is definitely clock frequency, right? Now, notice N2 is on track for production. This is an image from um, Tom's Hardware, but of course, it originates from TSMC. And you can see here that speed improvements at same power is around 18%, according to TSMC. Power reduction at the same speed is a uh, 30-ish 6% logic density and chip density, 1.2 and 1.15x respectively. Now, do note that when it comes to uh, those figures, especially when it comes to the clock frequency stuff, 
Those are typically best case scenarios, so very realistically, we may not see that on a complex chip such as this. Also, I just want to mention RIP to chip scaling and logic scaling and just everything scaling, actually. Like, back in the day, we were like, oh, SRAM, it's not scaling so well, but, you know... It's fine. We can do caches. We can we can do chiplets for caches. That's fine. We've still got logic. Oh. Okay. There's not enough. There's not enough hopium in the world for that at this point. But anyway, this means most likely um, there have been a lot of rumors that a Zen six is probably going to be around a maybe ten percent increase in IPC. And of course, when we're talking about workloads and also how workloads scale across different CPU different numbers of cpus um it's very difficult to 100 percent say well you know this workload is going to scale 100 percent across all of the cores because you also have things like bandwidth contention and this is actually another really interesting thing now if you take a look at the official disclosures here uh, amd are basically stating that the bandwidth uh for ddr5 is 12,800 mts which is actually really really fast and um amd have also had some information that's popped up i don't know if any of this has been officially disclosed yet but as of the time i'm recording this is from the Beidou forums and you can see here um a little bit further down actually well first of all there's a bunch of information concerning the memory configurations that i'll leave for you guys to read um there's also sdci smart data cache injection but um what I want to just spend a moment on is to, for you guys to check out this leaked or couple of leaked images for the uh, basically the actual cores themselves, the CPU configurations. And you can see here that Zen 6 or Zen 6 dense chips, should I say, are offering 32 cores per CCD. So that's just absolutely nuts. That's why, of course, we have uh, eight of those CCDs and that's how you get the higher core counts. So the rumor is, for the desktop anyway, with Medusa, we're going to see an increase in core counts as well. Um, so each of the CCDs is going to go from 8 cores up to 12 cores. So of course, this means that the next generation for the desktop on AM5 should be uh, 24 cores for the maximum uh, configuration. And of course, there will also be big changes to the IOD as well. Basically speaking, we're looking at increases in the amount of bandwidth across the chip. And theoretically, this should really help different workloads. So I think that this actually makes all the 10% IPC gain leaks reasonably believable. Um, it's going to, at this point, be a very much a question of what clock frequencies do we end up with. Uh, I'll be very interested, though, to see how the market responds, or should I say how Intel responds to these processes. Um, but at the moment, AMD are just absolutely dominating. Like, I'll be also extremely curious to see how the next generation of desktop processors fares. Like, the rumor is that Intel are going to be quite, you know, are going to be quite competitive with its next generation Nova Lake processors. Having said that, it's going to be interesting because theoretically they may actually have a core count advantage, uh, despite the fact that, of course, AMD have SMT on its uh, on its cores. And Intel doesn't seem to be doing that with its performance cores. So it's going to be very interesting to see how the workloads scale. I'm curious, though, guys, what do you think for the predictions of IPC for the next generation parts? Personally, I'm still being pretty pessimistic. I reckon 8 to 12%, around 10%. But of course, when it comes to IPC, there's also a lot of contention of like what workloads are you talking about? Because, for example, you know, a lot of these a lot of these numbers that float around you could be using like spec you know spec perf um you know and i'll have like spec in and other workloads and then you know it doesn't necessarily 100 percent translate to games and so it's going to be very interesting to see how games fare for the next generation because also there's of course a big difference in the iod and just overall bandwidth available for the next generation parts zen 5 for desktop could certainly be quite limited for that 
Um, and it's not just, you know, the bandwidth on the DDR5 memory, it's like all of the buses and stuff within the processor itself. So I'm going to be very interested. So yeah, let me know your thoughts and opinions about this one, guys. I'm very curious to hear what you think the IPC gains are. Personally, at this point, I'm staying around 8 to 12%. Uh, obviously, you know, hopefully more in terms of actual performance gains for games for the next generation of uh, zen processors but i think the real win for zen 6 for the desktop is simply going to be those higher core count variants with that said take care of yourselves bye for now